So before we start this module, let me just explain to you the concept of MVC or Model View Controller. And I'm going to explain to you what you are going to do with these files you downloaded, the controllers, repositories, the services, the models, and the JS files. These files or these modules are, are used to achieve something called Model View Controller. That is a way to build an application that shows how information flows right from the browser, where you type in the browser, all the way to the data store, in the database and you get your data uh, on the screen or on a HTML page. So it follows an architecture called model view controller architecture. So the view is a, is, a, is a user interface you see and that corresponds to the HTML pages, maybe JS file, CSS, all these correspond to the views as in what the user sees, uh, that is what we call the view. So let me actually write them where they belong. So here you have the HTML, HTML uh, plus JS plus CSS and every other thing you, are, you use to achieve a user interface. So this is where you have the view, right here, the view. So under the view, you now should have the controller. So anytime you go to your browser and enter something in the view, it goes to the controller. And this is where you have the controller. And that those controller files actually they belong in this layer. So here this is where you have the controller files. And they are actually Java files. Okay. They are the Java files. They are actually Java classes, but they have annotation called add controller annotation. Under the controller, we now have the services. Uh, the services actually is optional, but best practices requires that you need to use our uh, services. So once what you, a request made in the browser gets to the controller, the controller is going to pass that request onto the services to try to get this data from the services. So here you have the services and it's also Java files as well. So from the services, you now talk about the repository or the data, okay? So now we have repository here. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm writing real bad. So repository is a way to help you write the queries like insert, update, delete, and edit, and um, select insert, update, and delete query for you automatically. You don't have to write this query yourself. These queries are already implemented in repository. And this repository is called the JPA repository. So that is why we use a repository to interface between our service and the database. So that is why we have the repository files. And they also, uh, just like here, you have these also a Java, uh, Java classes. These are also Java files. So I provided all these for you. And now we have one, two, we have HTML, the JavaScript I gave to you, the controllers, the services, the repositories uh, you can download, as I mentioned before. So I hope this is clear. If not, leave me a comment and also subscribe. Let's now uh, move to the remaining parts. And then let's try to do, do this thing. And hopefully you understand it. If not, you, if you don't understand it clearly, please leave a comment for me to let me know where you have your challenges. And we are going to be doing the object-oriented design of our application. Basically, I've done this for you. So you simply decide what objects make up the application and also what is the relationship between these objects. Uh, so let me see. So I've made a list of objects I think are relevant for this fleet management application. Of course, we have, we should have employee we have a vehicle you have this vehicle we have vehicle hire vehicle maintenance vehicle make the model vehicle movement from one location to another vehicle type vehicle status person now one thing i want you to take note of there are some uh classes i've marked as asterisks now we have person it means a person is a super class where you can inherit other classes from for instance a contact is a person and we also have a client is a person, a supplier is a person, and we have an employee is a person. So I have employee is a person as well. So a person here is actually a super class, and these other classes have to inherit from it. So what I want you to do is 
Make a note of all these classes and write a brief uh, note of what they are all about. Auditable, I'm going to explain it later on when we are going to be talking about JPA auditing. Basically, it has to do with uh, last updated by, last updated on, created by, created on. These things can be added automatically by JPA auditing. Another thing I want you to take note of is this common object. I'm going to be explaining it more a little later. So common object is is a, is a super class where you can inherit things, other things from, for instance, vehicle type, vehicle status, vehicle model, make. All these are, are classes that has maybe only two fields, name and description. So we can have common objects that have two fields only, and then you inherit all these other classes from there. So we are going to understand it clearly a little later, but for now, I want to just show you what I've designed, because if you do an object-oriented design, then it can help you plan the navigation of the application. So this is what I have here. This is what I want it to be. So from an object-oriented design, the navigation uh, of your application can now reach to, can now reach all these objects. You'll be able to assess all of them. So for now, take note of all these objects as we are going to now be using it in step six. We are going to now actually be creating all these objects. I'd like to thank you for viewing. If you've not subscribed, please subscribe. And also, if you have any challenges, please let me know.